hello guys welcome back to the show so in this video i'll be teaching you how to write unit test in deno deno dino whatever it is called i don't even care anymore okay so in this video i'll be teaching you how to write unit test in dino okay um if you don't know what unit test is you need to find out what unit testing is it helps developers make changes in the code it gives developers confidence to make changes in big projects because they know that if their changes causes the application to break when they run the unit test, the test will fail and then they can correct it. So it is a good practice to always have tests in your application. If you don't already have Deno installed, you can use Homebrew to install Deno on your computer and we can start writing some tests. I have already created a simple class called Max. This class has got an add method, a subtract method, a multiply method, and a sync add method and a throw error method. So we're going to write unit tests for all these methods. And then see all the functionalities and all the APIs that we get from Deno to test our applications. As you can see over here, I've got a math.tx, which is a TypeScript file. In here, I've exported the class and I've created a, a test directory. Inside of the test directory, I've got a math underscore test.ts file, which will be uh, which will be used for the unit test, obviously. The one thing that you need to know is that all your test files should have the naming convention underscore test dot something underscore test dot js underscore test dot ts so all your testing files should have this naming convention okay so i've created a source directory it can be it could be lib it could be anything that you want and i've got a test directory which has caught all the unit tests all the tests that i'm going to write so the way that we write unit test in deno is different from how we write unit tests in other applications. You need to actually import. So let me import this calculator class. Some important calculator from here. All right. Let's write the method for the addition method for the add method um, without using anything that we've been provided by Deno. So if I wanted to write a test for this, right, for the addition method, I could write something like Deno test. addition of two numbers okay so the denotor test it takes in a string which is the name that or which is like the description that i would like to give to the test and it takes a callback function and inside of here i can write the test so the test that i'll write is that i'll create a new instance of the calculator class so i can say that const is equal to new calculator i can create an instance of the calculator class and what i can say is that results the results is new calculator dot add I'll add two numbers because this method takes two numbers. It takes X and Y. So I can pass in four and five. And what I can do over here without using any of the APIs provided by Deno, traditionally, I could have said something like if results is not equal to, let's say nine, throw new error. And the error that I would like to throw would be something like results is not equal to five. To run test in Deno, all you need to do is say Deno test. As you can see, the test passed, all right? If I should change this to, let's say 10 over here, and I run this, 15 is not equal to 5. Without using any of the APIs provided by Deno, I could write something like this. And my tests will still pass and I could still test my application. But that is a bit long and tedious to do. So Deno has provided us with some APIs that we could use to test our applications. Um, one of the APIs that we are going to use is the um, assert equal API. So I'll import that as you know. So I'll write the same method again, but this time using the asset equals API. Again, Dino dot test giving two numbers. I'll pass it a callback function. 
I'll create an instance of the class, a variable called addition, which will be new calculator dot add three four say assert equals addition ap7. So the assert API takes in the result from the method that you're calling as the first input, as the first parameter, and then your expected value. Okay. So if I run this test now, let me change this back to 15 because it will fail here. Let's run the test again and it passes. So there are different ways to run the test. When I say Dino test, it runs all the files with the underscore test.ts extension. You can decide to run just a single file by doing tests test directory and then that and that works as well so if not use the um, assert equals to test the addition we could do the same thing for the subtraction uh, method over here so we could say that i don't want to create a new instance so um, what we could do is to create a setup method that creates that instantiates the calculator class for us and we could use the instance throughout the whole of the test but for now i can do something like subtraction then pass it two parameters for four and six using the assert equals API. I could say assert equals subtraction minus two and run it like so. And it works. Okay. Now let's move on to testing the throw error method and then we can move on to testing the async add method. So from the asserts.ts from this URL, basically we could import the assert throw as well. Um, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So I can say something like assert throws and I can use this to assert that um, the function throws an error. So with the assert throws, pass it the method that throws the error and then you can check the message that the method throws. So in this case, the asset throw throws an error saying that the value that I've provided has to be greater than zero has to be greater than 10. Okay. So I can do something like, you know, the test thrown if the value less than 10, I'll create an instance of the class. Now let me create an error variable over here and say, assert throws error. Like I said earlier, the assert throws error takes in a callback function. And inside of this callback function, we can call the throw error method. Okay. So what I can say is that new calculator dot throw error and pass it to values that are less than 10. So I can say three and five. I need to pass it just one parameter. So new calculator dot throw error. I'll pass it seven. Okay. And what I can do now is to basically, if I run this one, it runs and it passes. Let's show you. So this passes as well, right? But now if I would like to check the message being thrown, being logged out, I can test that by saying something like error, assert equals error, the message. So I want to test that the error message is, is this string right here. So I want to test that the error message is seven has to be greater than 10 and that passes as well. Now, the last thing we're going to do is how to test um, asynchronous functions, because that is one of the main problems that developers have when testing. They don't know how to test asynchronous functions because they don't know how to test it. So um, the way to test asynchronous function using Deno is to use the async await or you can use the await um, API dot test. OK, so what do I have? I've got Deno dot test. The description is testing async functions. I've provided the async API in front of the method to indicate that it is an async method. Then I wait for this to resolve. And then I assert that the result is equal to 11. So if you look at the async add, I pass into parameters X and Y. I wait for the promise to resolve what X plus Y is. Then I return the result. Okay. So if I do this now, that passes. If I remove the async and I wait from the test right now, so I get rid of this then I get rid of this. The test will fail because I'm not able to wait for the 
for the method to resolve for me to get the value before I test it as you can see promise pending so the promise is still pending so I need to use the async await um, APIs in order to wait uh, for the result and I can test it um, there is another API provided by Deno called expect which lets you test like how you would test using Jest. let me show you an example so I've imported expect from expect.ts and I have like a simple um, test method over here I've got an array of numbers and I've got a name called Chris and I'm saying that expect list of numbers to contain six which is something similar to how you would test in Jest using Jest um, expect lists of numbers to have length four which is something that you would use like when you're testing um, using Jest and there's one thing that you could do as well is that expect dot as you can see they've got like everything related to Jest like these are all the APIs that we get from Jest as well so to be less than to be truthy to be defined to contain to be equal these are all the methods that we have um, you know in Jest as well so um, to be to be Chris let's say if I run the test now see everything passes so that is how you can use Deno to test and this is just like an introduction um, to testing Deno I can go in depth and do some more um, testing and show you some of the advanced stuff that you can do um, with Deno and testing Deno so um, I will end this video here um, I hope you enjoyed it um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time